We're going to start right out with uh, two of our guests, Richard Loveridge. Um, it, it, actually, you have the condition, is that it? Yes, so I, we're, I'm an alpha. He's an alpha. We're going to be talking about uh, the, the condition along with Dr. Dennis Gord. He's a pulmonologist and uh, he, he will certainly be able to uh, shed some light on this condition. And maybe it's something you have or you might be predisposed to. We're going to find out. Uh, Richard, why don't you start us out? Yeah, sure. Um, we're here about for Alpha-1 awareness. Luckily, we have a nickname. It's Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, which is a mouthful, right? Mm -hmm. Luckily, Alpha-1 is kind of cool, Covers cool, it. cool, and we call ourselves Alphas. Don't Google that. You'll end up with all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> if you Google Alpha-1... Top one, dog, huh? <laughs> exactly. No, if you Google Alpha-1, you'll end up with the Alpha-1 Foundation. It's a place for a lot of really excellent information. It's a well-designed website. And on Facebook, they're the Alpha Friends. That's another place. But it's a genetic disorder, and that's the most important thing to remember, which means uh, you can't give it to anyone, they can't give it to you, you can't sneeze on anyone, your parents confer it to you through their genes. Mm -hmm. And the most uh, typical expression of it is a lung disorder. Is it an autoimmune disease uh, it, it, in also? It's or? helpful, I think, uh, Dr. Gork can address that. I, I find it helpful to describe it to people in some of the same terms because of the way Even though it's functions. not exactly the same. It's, it's not it's, exactly. Yeah. Although it's not technically the same, it makes it an easier path to understand. Because autoimmune diseases are not transmittable. You can't exchange that. That's so, right. Yeah. It, it, they're similar in that way. Yeah. Um, the, it's a needle in a haystack if you are predisposed to think of it in that way, but we don't think so. Um, Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is the leading genetic factor for COPD. Mm -hmm. So now oh, you're... Oh, really? Yeah. So now your haystack wow. is a great deal smaller, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And it isn't just people my age, although those are the people that you'll commonly see on Facebook talking about it. The sad part is that I didn't get it when I was 50 years old. I was simply diagnosed then. I was going to so say you had all your life. I've had it all my life and I've had symptoms my entire life. And could so not recognize what those symptoms were. No, of course not. And even your doctor may misdiagnose it, unfortunately. So we like to say that, uh, and uh, the World Health Organization, the American Society of Thoracic uh, Surgeons, they all say if you have COPD, get tested for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. There's simply, there's 3% of people with COPD. There are probably 400 people in the capital region right now that have the most severe And maybe form. don't even know they have it. And they, I, can, I can assure you that very few of them, uh, I know Dr. Gord actually treats quite a few, but uh, the number is not the same. Dr. Gord, how long has uh, this condition, this disorder, been recognized? About 50 years. 50 years, so it's a relatively new new in the realm of medicine. Yes. And how, how did that come about? How did well, some researchers in Scandinavia, I think it was Sweden, recognized that in a certain subgroup of people with severe COPD, there was a, uh, a reduced amount of protein on something called the serum protein electrophoresis. And <clears throat> it turns out that this was uh, uh, alpha-1 antitrypsin. So, and so they could deficiency. recognize that. There was a deficiency, at least this tested out. And uh, so uh, the protein was identified that these people are deficient in. Now, since DNA testing or gen genetic testing hasn't been around forever, I mean, right. it's been a, it, relatively new in the realm of, of uh, uh, science, uh, they could not really do, they didn't recognize that it was a genetic disorder, or did they? Well, the uh, amount of protein is abnormal and less. Uh, so that's called phenotyping. Uh, mm -hmm. The actual gene testing mm, is really not necessary in most cases. Uh, it's the phenotype or the uh, type of protein in the blood and a low level to start with on a basic screening test. So you recognize that and then... You look for it with a, with a, with a level and then if the level is low or low normal, one can then get a phenotype. Well, and I understand, but my, my, my concern is that anyone with COPD that doesn't know if they have the alpha right. could get tested, is that correct? Easily. Absolutely. And how is the treatment different? Well, it's a lot of people with uh, uh, partial or full alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency because they're two genes, and if somebody has one abnormal and one normal, the level will be lower, but they're probably still protected. Um, the, uh, uh, many, many such people have asthma uh, and uh, respond to bronchodilators. Many fully reverse, uh, some don't. 
and, uh, but there is an augmentation where the normal from pool donors that have no known transmissible um, uh, diseases and none has been shown to occur from serum taken from this donor pool, uh, patients with uh, uh, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency get a weekly infusion of normal alpha. Oh, okay. And so there is a treatment that is different then? Yes. Absolutely. It, stabil it stabilizes the condition. Uh, the, um, so you have to get it from both the, the father and the mother, is that correct? You get, a, you get an abnormal gene from each parent. Okay. And, and if they, they link up, the two, then you've you got more of a problem. If you have two abnormals, you're homozygote de uh, deficient, mm -hmm. and you're susceptible you know, to developing airflow obstruction. And the, the purpose of raising awareness is to get people to get tested, is that correct? Is this a normal test, or I mean, it's just a blood test, is that correct? Right. So it's not, a, a, I mean, it's invasive, but it's not that invasive yet. It's a venous stick, like getting a CBC done. Oh, okay, yeah. or so it's really nothing major. No, no fasting yeah. even. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Really and, and I understand they're, they're cutting out a lot of fasting on many of the tests, which is amazing when I yeah. hear that. So. And if people are worried about if their insurance will cover it or not, I mean, you can go right to the Alpha One website and get hooked up with a test, or you could see your physician. And I think it's important to note as well that if you do have these, if you are diagnosed with COPD by your physician and they don't recommend the testing, that doesn't mean you shouldn't get it. Ah, okay. You have to take the initiative yourself, and that's the most important step. Not every physician is as is, up on it. Is I know that you know. I know there's other uh, <clears throat> disorders that that kind of go by the wayside. You go to the doctor and they, they treat you for this, they treat you for the symptom right. rather than what is the underlying cause. And um, I know sarcoid is one of those conditions that not everybody right. is, is familiar with. You go to the doctor or you go to an NP or your PA. Um, how, how um, I guess, how educated, and I use that term loosely, are physicians in this? Well, COPD is a very, very widespread condition. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, a small percentage, but not trivial, uh, has either partial or full alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. The, uh, most people with COPD don't. There's a lot of the genetic mechanisms of who is susceptible, who not, yet remains to be worked out. This is just the first one, and it's the only one that's known. The, uh, um, but if a person, and it's very complex because you can have two people identical age who are both two pack per day smokers and one uh, uh, is devastated and the other has normal lung function. I'm not talking about alphas now, I'm mm -hmm. talking in general. And so there's a whole bunch of risk factors that are not yet understood. But um, uh, the, this is a risk factor to develop uh, uh, progressive airflow obstruction. If a person has airway symptoms such as cough or intermittent wheezing that are not fully reversible with medication or they have uh, uh, airflow obstruction on a basic simple office test called spirometry, mm -hmm. which most primary care physicians perform, mm -hmm. then th uh, adding this blood test is very easy. Well, you've learned a little yeah, bit. We, yeah. we certainly uh, wish we had more time to discuss this, but at least you're, it's called Alpha One Awareness, and, and this is what we're trying to do is raise an awareness. If you have COPD, you might want to explore this with your primary care physician or your pulmonologist and uh, find out more about it. Uh, it's important to know, uh, in a way, give it a name, find out what it is that you're dealing with. And I thank you both for being here thank today you, and, and so uh, yeah. putting yeah. that yeah. information out yeah. to the public yeah. because, like I said, I knew nothing about this, so I was so pleased to talk to both of you about this. Thank you so Thanks, much. Sam.